Okay, moving on. Quality assurance. All finance institutions are required to file timely and complete SDRs, and the quality of these SDRs can be an indication of the quality of the financial institution's AML or CFD program. Uh, usually, you don't file too many SDRs these days if you're an employer in AML or CFD. You used to do this all the time. It used to be just as big as KYC, just going in there and filing SDRs, but it's a very automated process now. A lot of software does it automatically. But there is a narrative with the way you wrote it. There's a guy, some, there's some people online who've got a course on how to do it. Maybe I'll show you guys how to do it. In the SDR decision making process, it's critical to ensuring that appropriate level of oversight in the investigative process and quality insurance QA review helps to ensure that SDR filings are internally consistent and the right decisions are being made and the high priority matters are identified and escalated to leadership. The larger the scale of the financial institution, its staff, and where it may be located all have an impact on the QA process. As a result, finance institutions that implement a QR pro QA process should document the requirements and qualifications for QR review QA reviewers and regularly review the outcome of QA reviews to assess the quality of staff training requirements and the general health of the program. SDR filing oversight escalation. As a insti uh, an institution should have robust policies and procedures documenting the appropriate oversight of the investigation pro investigations process and regulatory reporting requirements. This should include specific actions to be taken, such as escalation to senior management in cases where a customer filing employee or individual of the AML CFT chain of command is complicit or willfully blind to suspicious financial activities. All right, case study in March 2016, the OCC, I was at a bank actually once that had an OCC consent order, issued a consent order to which it fined Charles Sanders, the former chief compliance officer and chief risk officer of Gubertor Private Bank and Trust Co. of Coral Gables, which is in Florida, $25,500 for causing the bank to fail to file SA, uh, 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 um, suspicious activity reports. And in order of in order, the OC indicated the bank's PSA officer had investigated activity related to a Ponzi scheme at the bank and prepared SARs for filing. Uh, Mr. Sanders agreed with the content of the reports but failed to ensure the bank timely filed the reports. So he just didn't give a shit. He was like, ah, oh, well, yeah, but this is what our business model, whatever, you know what I mean? Case study, Florida-based attorney Scott Rothstein pleaded guilty in 2009 to operating a 1.2 billion Ponzi scheme that involved pulling in investors for confidential out-of-court legal settlements that were in fact entirely fabricated. The litigants were, were that were supposedly cashing out of the structured settlements were said to be involved in sexual harassment and whistleblower cases that defendants wanted to remain secret. The premise was viable, but Rothstein offered abnormally large returns for the type of investment in some cases, more than 20% in 90 days. Well, that should be a you know a sign. Rothstein originally maintained accounts at Ed Gilbert to a private bank and trust where he was personally invested and was subsequently penalized of $4 million by the fin by FinCEN in 2016 for willful anti-money laundering compliance violations. The penalty was the result of deficiencies in Gilbert Trust systems that caused the bank to miss alerts related to Rothstein's accounts. Rothstein's role as an investor may have played a role in the lack of regulatory filings related to his accounts. He would also go on to allege Gilbert Trust Vice President assisted him in moving funds between accounts to fend off compliance staff. Cool. Rothstein opened accounts at TD Bank to continue operating the scheme after some investors informed him they prepared dealing with a large institution. He later indicated that he gave his contact to TD uh, Bank cash for his continued facilitation of the scheme, also noting that the individual handled any of all concerns raised by the bank compliance officials and the accounts linked to the scheme. FinCEN assessed a $37.5 million civil manner penalty against TD Bank NA the, the, the September 2013 for failure to file suspicious activity reports related to the massive Ponzi scheme. Closing the account. Based on an internal investigation, the finance institution should make an independent determination whether to close the account in issue. Some of the factors that the institution should consider are the legal base for closing the account. So you can't just close the account. You kind of have to prove that, you, the account, that closing the account is necessary. So this is what, basically this is what it touches on. The institution stated policies and procedures for closing an account, which may include automatic closure recommendation following the specified number of STR filings, the seriousness of the underlying conduct, if the conduct rises to a level where the account would ordinarily be closed, when the institution should consider closing the account, the reputational risk of the institution posed by maintaining the account, and correspondence with law enforcement and requests from law enforcement to either cancel or maintain the account. Yeah, law enforcement might have requests to keep the account open, so you have to ask them. Communicating with law enforcement to SDRs. When an institution files a suspicious, uh, uh, suspicious um, um, SDRs, the details filing may rise to level warrants additional law enforcement notification. 
SDRs represent financial intelligence for the country's FIU. Depending on the volume of reports filed in a given country, a report where the prior priority attention may be hidden in by the large number of reports filed. Following the filing of the SDR, the responsible compliance officer or designee may to decide to contact a particular law enforcement division to notify it of the recent filing to make it aware of activity relevant in the area of courage or co coverage or geographical location. Moreover, a law enforcement agent may conduct the financial institution that filed the SDR, seeking the underlying information used in the investigation that resulted in the SDR. Therefore, it is critical that each in institution develop its own policy procedures for communicating with law enforcement regarding SDRs. Okay. Global Bank, SDR, Financial Intelligence Unit, and Law Enforcement. Okay, so maybe you have to use the Financial Intelligence Unit sort of as a mediator. Okay. In investigations initiated by law enforcement, law enforcement agencies may initiate investigations against filing a financial institution or contact financial institutions in the context of the investigation involving a customer of the institution. Steps that law enforcement agencies can or should take in, uh, in conducting a money laundering investigation include the following. Follow the money. If the agency is aware of where the loan of money originated or where it ended up, it is appropriate for the agency to attempt to bring the two ends together and to compile a complete understanding of the flow of funds. Leverage the financial knowledge of the due diligence information contained in financial institutions through the information sharing and trans transactional reviews. A financial institution can assist law enforcement in identifying the originating or ultimate destination of the subject funds. Furthermore, the supporting documentation that was used to create an SDR or customer due diligence file may be used as evidence where the actual SDRs may not be in any jurisdictions. Identify the unlawful activity in most countries define money laundering in terms of predicate offenses or specified unlawful activities. These are usually very extensive and include many felony crimes such as bribery, extortion, racketeering, narcotics trafficking and human trafficking in order for the money laundering case to result in a conviction. Prosecutors need to establish the flow of money as well as the existence of a predicate offence. Review databases, uh, financial intelligence units, databases and commercial databases can provide very useful and extensive financial information and provide leads as to which financial institutions to ask for assistance. Also records such as social security information in the United States, i.e. tax related information can be used to further identify subjects. Review public records, court records, as well as court filings and credit reports can provide useful background information. Review licensing and registration fee files, such as records held by motor vehicle departments and other registration databases, can provide background information and useful leads. Analyze the financial transactions and account activity of the target. Look for the normal and expected transactions of the individual or entity based off self-disclosures, income and, and typical flow of funds by similarly situated people. Financial institutions may be able to assist in identifying these items if the transactions are outside the norm or stated level activity, then analyze where the additional funds come from and the composition of the unusual activity. Review SDRs that might involve any potential individual linked to the targeted transactions or activity. Uh, it's ongoing, this stuff sometimes. In cross-border cases, seek international assistance. Decision to prosecute financial institution for money laundering and violations. All right. Unless you're really one of the big wigs, which I'll probably never get to, you may not be involved in the decision, but you never know. There might be a question on this. When considering whether or, or, or to what extent to bring a case against an institution of following money laundering related charges, prosecutors will look at many factors, including the following. The institution has a criminal history. The institution has cooperated with the investigation. The institution has self-reported the money laundering issues. The institution has had comprehensive and effective AML CFT program. The institution has taken timely and effective remedial action. There are civil remedies available that can serve as punishment. All right. Determining wrongdoing by others is, is needed uh, and will be served by a prosecution. Advice and recommendations from regulatory agencies and or the FIU for the jurisdiction is available. Assuming the case is not simple or erroneous, the decision to prosecute is frequently determined by what the prosecutors believe was the intent of the institution when it took and undertook the action in question. All right. Um, responding to a law enforcement investigation against a financial institution. When the financial institution is confronted with a law enforcement investigation, it should respond quickly and completely to all requests. Uh, legal counsel will, have, will always do this. Failure to do so could cause unnecessary risk or damage to the institution. If a request is overly broad or unduly intrusive, the institution can attempt to narrow the request or can even seek to contest the, re the request or portions of the request in court. However, under no circumstances should an institution ignore or delay responding uh, to a law enforcement inquiry for requested documents. Their own RFI, I guess. 
Upon receipt of a law enforcement inquiry, this financial institution needs to ensure that the appropriate senior management is informed and that someone is designated to respond to all law enforcement requests, to monitor the progress of the investigation and to keep senior management, including the board of directors, informed of the nature of the progress of the investigation. So the board of directors will always be kept and be informed. Of course, reports for inform or information about the investigation should not be provided by any employees, officers or directors of the institution who might be implicated in the investigation. The financial institution should consider retaining qualified, experienced legal counsel, such as counsel. Such counsel can guide the institution th uh, through the inquiry, contest record uh, requests that are perceived to be improper, and assist in negotiating settlement if necessary. As set forth below, when an institution receives a subpoena, search warrant, or similar law enforcement demand, it becomes aware of government-related institution involving the institution. Institution, government-related investigation involving the institution. It should conduct an inquiry of its own to determine the underlying facts of the institution's exposure and what steps, if any, the institution should take. So yeah, it needs to do it on its own, actually.